go ahead and introduce David from the uh, program so I don't miss anything. So here we go, David Hoffmeister. Studied and applied A Course in Miracles intensively in his transformation of consciousness. He brings to discussions a depth of thought and an ability to use a variety of metaphors and examples to shed light on an array of uplifting ideas. For several years, he investigated the writings, tapes, foundations, and groups which sprang up around A Course in Miracles and sought out to help others and devoted their lives to the Course in Miracles path to help deepen his own understanding. In 1988, sounds like we did that journey begins, right? In 1988, David began sharing his ideas from the Course, sprinkled with experiences from his own inward journey. And in 1990, he began traveling to dialogue with others who devoted their lives to the awakening process. In the summer of 91, David began traveling and speaking on the Course across the country and into Canada. In 92, he addressed the first ever ACIM Eurasia Conference near Lublin, Ohio. In 1993 and 94, he toured the Midwest, conducting the gatherings and intensives, which were recorded on audio tape. In 95, David spent many hours in silence and at a secluded hermitage, and in 96, he founded a peace house in Cincinnati, Ohio. In 99, the Foundation for the Awakening Mind was established as a publicly supported nonprofit organization dedicated to teaching and learning true forgiveness and awakening to reality. The Foundation makes journals, audio cassettes, video cassettes, and they have talks and gatherings and retreats available to the public on a donation basis. So everything on David's website is on a donation basis, so he's my kind of guy. In 2003, David became an international lecturer on the course and now shares his inspirational ideas on a worldwide basis. So David, come on up. Well, thank you, everyone. It's just wonderful being here uh, at the One Center. To me, One is uh, it's just a, such an expressive idea and experience of what we really are. And uh, I've used the Course in Miracles in my find the best way to hold this here. Um, I've used the Course in Miracles in my transformation, and what I've gone through is uh, what Robin was talking about, a surrender of control, of trying to direct my life and giving it over to the Holy Spirit, the higher power, whatever you'd like to call it. And really going for an experience, because I got to the point where I really started to see that we really don't need more theologies in the world. We have a lot of religions and theologies, but, but what everybody's going for is that experience of peace of mind, of inner peace. And as we were talking about, uh, even the, the drumming that started off about clearing, removing the obstacles, that's, that's what the whole journey to peace is. It's just going within your mind and starting to realize that there's obstacles in there, that there's grievances, that there's hurts. It's a deep seated, buried, unconscious belief system in separation. And separation and oneness don't go together. So that's why when you work with the Course or any uh, spiritual path that takes you inward to removing the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence, then you really are getting into this experience of inner peace and joy. I travel around the world now and all of the United States and Canada and I would say that I call these gatherings we have uh, enlightenment uh, intensives because it's not any particular path. In fact, uh, it's a joy when I find I just go meet myself over and over and over wherever I go. And it doesn't matter what culture I'm in, uh, it doesn't matter whether the people even seem to speak the language uh, that I speak. Uh, when I've been down to Argentina, they've had, I just did 19 uh, consecutive gatherings down in uh, Argentina in last March, and uh, they had translators following me around uh, speaking in Spanish, sometimes two translators at a gathering. Uh, when the translators would get stuck on a word, uh, people would call out words from the audience. Uh, 
<laughs> this was a, a culture down there in Argentina where there was like uh, uh, probably it's probably 85 percent Catholic, so Jesus is a very powerful symbol. But their economy has collapsed. The children are starving. Uh, they they're kind of reaching a point in consciousness that a lot of people around the world are reaching, where they're desperate for an authentic spiritual experience. You know, they don't want another theology or to pray to some statue or to some painting or to somebody in a uh, you know, spirit in the sky. They want the actual experience. So what I noticed in all of my gatherings in Argentina was when people came and it was almost like a revival. There was lots of tears. Uh, people were, were crying. There was lots of, of healing that was going on, spontaneous healing. Um, there was one woman psychologist who just who had such a deep seated hurt that she was crying so much that another woman had to come behind her and put her arms around her and embrace her so the woman could even get her attention out. But it was really a powerful experience for me because it just shows how when you really have a passion for healing and you really, really want to, to have that inner peace, your life may get thrown into seeming havoc or chaos. But as we've just heard, it turns around. And and what Robin was sharing too is uh, I can so much relate to what her and her husband are going through right now, their children, in the sense that, that that's what my life was back around uh, the turn of about 1990, 1991. Because I was being guided, I received a calling to just go around and shine my light and share my joy. and. Uh, initially, my biggest concern was that, that I didn't have any financial backing. Uh, I didn't have CDs and money markets. I, I was not affiliated with any kind of organization or religion or anything. And the thoughts, I mean, I used to talk to Jesus a lot and kind of say, I don't know about where you live, but down here, money doesn't grow on trees. You can't just go in your backyard and shake the tree and have $100 bills come floating down. Uh, but I kept hearing, just have faith, my child, you know, just go shine your light, share your joy, and I'll take care of the rest. And Jesus had said that 2,000 years ago about, you know, look at the lilies of the field, they neither spin their toil, and seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things else will be added. And so when I got to the course, uh, it was kind of like he was saying, in case you missed it, I've been saying this for like 2,000 years, but uh, there's a passage in the Course that says, once you have accepted His plan, God's, the Holy Spirit's plan, as the one function you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you. Without your effort, He will go before you, making straight your path, and leaving in your way no stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need to take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. And when I read that passage, it was almost like Jesus was saying, did you get it? I mean, did you get it? Have faith. The, the, the word that you heard, have faith. So, so I did. I just thought, well, if I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket. It might as well be in the basket of faith, just to trust. And after 10 years of college and lots of uh, education and jobs, experiences and whatever, I just felt impelled to start traveling the country. And what happened to me on my very first trip was a five and a half week, week trip that I came out here to California and just really all over the United States and Canada. I had so many miracles that just kind of knocked my sock off. I mean, it just absolutely blew me away that I would be so well taken care of. You know, I had thoughts that I'd uh, maybe end up like a bag lady on the street somewhere and, you know, but none of that. You know, it was, I went to a lot of Course in Miracles gatherings, I was taken in. It wasn't so much even like uh, Peace Program always talked about, you know, there was always a place to stay, always someone to meet, always someone to talk to. I was always taken in and at times I would go to churches or bookstores or gatherings and I'd have like two or three invitations. So it wasn't so much trying to find a place to stay or, or have food to eat. It was like, you know, some of these Course of Miracles potlucks and they load you up with food. You have to kindly say, no thank you, <laughs> I've had enough. So 
that's been the experience for me. And that was back in 1991, so I can really relate to Robin and her husband and children right now because you're right in, on the cusp of this glorious ride where people get sent to you and you get to shine your light and, and you really have to trust that everything that comes to you is coming from your higher power or from the Holy Spirit. Whenever you start to get into guilt, it's always because you're back into the personal perspective of, okay, I've got to do something, or uh, looking to certain people, like looking to a board of directors or to uh, donors. And, you know, it's never going to get into that thing like uh, we're getting greeted and serenaded. <laughs> the ones, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. It never gets into this thing of favoritism or... Um, you know, who donated what or how much. I mean, it's, I know Robin and her husband are experiencing the volunteerism of people just showing up. And there's so much joy that you actually lose track of, of what you're doing in terms of form. You, you start to get more into your purpose, which is just to shine the light. And when you shine the light, things just show up in miraculous ways. And in these last 13 years, I, if I wrote a book, it would... It would probably be bigger than the, the Bible and the Arantia book and the Course in Miracles combined, uh, all the miracle parables and experiences. But I like to just, uh, when I travel, I share bits and pieces of them here and there just because they're just stories of inspiration that when you let go of trying to control your life, God is there. So I feel extremely honored to be here, and everywhere I go, I just feel like I keep meeting myself over and over. And of course the miracles is just one path that aims at what we might call self-realization, know thyself, enlightenment, uh, salvation, uh, oneness. I feel just like a, a child filled with joy in the sense that I've reached the state of mind and the transformation that I actually don't have any problems anymore. I actually don't have any uh, financial problems or health problems. I have no relationship problems. Uh, I was talking in a group uh, yesterday for about four hours, and uh, they know me from my videos and, and stuff to work on the web. But in the state of enlightenment or self-realization, you see that everybody is there with you. It's not uh, somebody being enlightened and then everybody else not being enlightened. It's kind of like, you know, I've got it, but you don't. What you do in this state is you see everybody with such love and, and honor and respect. Because you're looking through the filter of your own mind, and when you remove all those obstacles and grievances, everything is beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. And in fact, when I go to other countries, uh, I was, when I was in Argentina, the, the bombs started falling on, uh, on Baghdad, and there were people protesting out on the streets, like anti-American protests, and, and banners flying everywhere, and, I was like a child walking around going, wow, look at all these people. And, and uh, I asked one of them, uh, what did that banner say? Because it was hung across the street. And it said, Senor Bush, take up knitting. <laughs> said, now that's a peace rally. <laughs> Forget the anti-war stuff. <laughs> Senor Bush, take up knitting. I said, I think I'm in the right country here. <laughs> so I went to the gatherings and... Uh, you know, they're, they're all speaking Spanish and everything, and I don't know a word of it. It's like, see, senor. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know much Spanish, so they're asking me all these questions. And one of the questions was, um, they were really, some of them were really interested in the war, what my, my idea of the war was. And uh, so they translated one of the questions in Spanish to me. Uh, they said, what is your position on your president? What is your position on your president? And, and they gave me the... the Thing. It was like, uh, okay, what is my position? I, I have, I have no position on, a pre on my president. And then they came back to me and they said, uh, don't you understand the question? Uh, and I said, no, it's, it's not understandable. I said, we're all children of God. Uh, we're all spirits, and um, we are children of a loving source. And and this isn't political. Uh, <laughs> God really isn't political. God doesn't see political boundaries or, uh, like the Native Americans say, you know, there's no, there's no dividing line between, you know, countries and states. It's just all shared. 
And uh, so I just basically said, uh, I have no position. And um, so then they all started to nod, and, and I learned the Spanish word claro, meaning clear. They're all nodding, claro, claro. And then I had this, I just broke out into a rendition of uh, John Lennon's uh, Imagine. Imagine there's no country. The wonder if you can, nothing you can, nothing to kill or die for, a brotherhood of man. And all these women, about 97 percent women, started singing with me, imagine, on key, and in English. And I had one of these moments like chills going down my spine, like, where am I? Whoa! I thought I was in Argentina. But we're all sitting there singing on key, you know. You may say, I'm a dreamer. Yeah, it was so beautiful. And that was a feeling of oneness. I mean, that was a feeling that that uh, nobody there was taking seriously this idea of, uh, of conflict. When you get into the joy and you really feel that joy in your heart, you know that you are connected with everything and everyone. And there are no barriers and there are no boundaries whatsoever. And I've gone into this really deep in my mind so that I get a lot of questions and about, you know, what about rape and murder, what about uh, Nazi Germany, uh, what about disease and plague and all these different kind of things. And so I sit there and calmly go into people deep into the mind, be past all the errors of perception down to what I call healed perception, a place where you see the world differently than you saw it before. Where before you saw division and separation, suddenly you see oneness, you see the whole tapestry, and the whole tapestry is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And those are good questions. I think it's important, what I've learned is it's very important to allow your mind to ask questions. Because once you allow your mind to ask the questions, you have the answers within yourself. You don't really need the gurus or priests or ministers or you don't need saints uh, to tell you how to act and how to behave. What you really need is just a transformation in your own heart. And then all your behaviors just fall as suit. You know, once you get your mind in line with your source, then, you know, it really is smooth sailing from there. So, I had this experience of oneness, and what I would say it is, is I would say it's a, it's a, it's a tiny tweak in the mind. Just like you know sometimes when you're having a bad day, and then all of a sudden something changes inside, and you change your tune, and you don't even know what happens, like divine intervention or something, like <laughs> you're skipping along, where one minute it's, everything seems so dark. The next minute, everything seems so happy. That's a miracle. That's what I call a miracle. It, a miracle, it does take a miracle to look upon this world from a place of peace. And to be in a state of peace of mind, it takes a lot of miracles. You have to say what I would call to be consistently miracle-minded or right-minded, as the Course would say, to stay in a state of above the battleground of peace and, and joy. It takes trust. There is no way that you can seem to move through this world without trust and faith. And when I'm talking about trust, I'm talking about in your higher power within, those inner prompts that are guiding you every second of every day. It's always there for you. It's just like always gently reminding you how beautiful you are, how lovely, how perfect, how innocent. Uh, all of us have been raised with a belief system that we feel like we have to uh, strive and attain and accumulate. And in the state of mind I'm in, like I was sharing yesterday, I, I don't have any possessions. I don't uh, literally own anything. And it's not so much a form thing, but it's like giving up the idea of possession. You know, it, in relationships, in, in every interaction I do, what I, the Holy Spirit has done is He said, you have to learn to give as God gives. Give as the flower launches its fragrance up into the air for everyone to smell. Uh, let it give everything away so freely and realize that you're perfectly provided for and you will demonstrate a state of mind that is not of this world because this is a world of 
of seeming scarcity, of lack, where there's bargains and agreements and lots of things that go on. And it takes a lot of faith to turn your mind around from that and say, I just want to give it all away for free and trust that it will all be provided. So that's really what Robin was sharing. That's what my last uh, 13 years have been is I've done hundreds and oh, probably thousands of, of gatherings and talks in restaurants, bookstores, backyards. Uh, here we are, the patio area. <laughs> um, I did one on a, on a beach. That was fun. Uh, in an orchard. I think I was in an orchard called Elk, in Elk Grove here uh, near Sacramento. I, I was in an orchard and it was a hot day, about 100 degrees, and everybody was under the trees, so I really, no microphone system, I had to let the voice kind of boom through. Um, but all these gatherings have really been for me. Uh, I seem to have talked to thousands of people in lots and lots of places, but it was all about my own uh, transformation of consciousness, my own willingness to learn not to judge anymore, you know, to just accept everybody exactly as they are in the present moment. And I, the thing I really want to focus on too is that oneness is synonymous with the present moment. The present moment is extremely simple. And if you ever notice when you're fully present how joyful and happy you feel, you're just happy for no worldly reason at all. You're clueless and you're happy. And that's what it means to be content in the present moment. And what I'm saying is, it's actually possible to live in this present moment always. You don't, uh, I mean, I'm in a situation where I really don't feel a need now to go anywhere or do anything. And I was saying yesterday, I have a little three-legged cat that I play with. I'm very content and feel the perfection of everything in this moment. And it's only when I get invitations that I go, well, good, an invitation. Because I've got nowhere to go and nobody to convince. I'm not trying to proselytize. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I think, actually, I really feel right now that everybody's just perfect right where they are. Uh, and I, I can't divide up the world anymore and take sides and all that craziness. I've, I've gone past that point. So I was up in uh, near Danville, California, at San Damiano, and that's when uh, Scott Murray kept showing up at my lunch table. Mm -hmm. And then um, at the end of the conference, it was a Course in Miracles conference, so, uh, they came up and they went to the man who set it up, Tony Ponticello, and they said, we're going to kidnap David. And uh, the minister told me, said, well, why don't you ask David first if he wants to be kidnapped? <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, I want to be kidnapped by these two. I've, I've had a ball with them the whole time here for a month. So they did kidnap me. And they took me all over San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge, and all kinds of... They took me to bars and everything. <laughs> but the fun thing to do, if you get a mystic or a saint, you know, you take them to the bars. You know, I go to the ball wherever I am, and I don't uh, judge anybody. So to me, it's a chapel, bar, whatever. It's all the thing. Um, and so we had a ball. You know, we just went around and we're laughing and the race. And, Parking space, parking space, five minutes before we get to these places, you know, we get there, we right into the parking space. We just had a ball laughing and everything, and, they, and Scott said, well, my sister is opening a one center. And I said, oh, one center. And she wants to open it on one, 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 at one. <laughs> well, I like the word one, but that was like one, 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 at one. Uh, that was a one center. That's five ones in a row. Yahtzee! <laughs> uh, uh, that that gets my attention. So, so that's why I'm here, because that, that was an invitation, and then... Um, Scott mentioned about the, the name, and I thought, how cool. And I was just talking about doing the One World Tour, because I just don't see everybody the same. I see the atheists, and the Gnostics, and the Christians, and the Buddhists, and the Hindus, and Native American, and on and on. It's all the same. So I just see oneness wherever I look. And I have so much fun, you know, atheists come to my gatherings, and I have so much fun with everybody, because I have nothing to contest. You know, I think they're all sweeties, uh, whatever they say or do. Uh, when I was in Argentina 
I was there with the military police and in the barracks in the back, you know, barbed wire. I went, oh, cool, this is fun. I got <laughs> there two in the morning. The woman who picked me up got lost, and I got to go meet the military police and machine guns. See, it's an adventure when you realize that you are, as the Matrix says, you are the one. You can't be harmed because there's nothing outside of you uh, that can harm you. Uh, there's nothing to defend against anymore, so you're invulnerable. And that's what makes it fun. We've grown up in a culture. Anybody here remember Mr. Magoo? Yeah. Mr. Magoo? Hey! Yeah. Is that a spiritual figure or what? I mean, Magoo was clueless. <laughs> Magoo was a, ah, always happy. Uh, it didn't matter. They could have taken his car or whatever. He'd be just winking. He's kind of, kind of like blind to the world. And he was so in tune. Anybody see the movie uh, Being There with uh, Peter Sellers? How beautiful and simple he was. Uh, everybody projected all these things onto him, but he was just going around loving everybody. I like to watch, he said. I like to watch. <laughs> he saw everything the same. Um, more recently, we've got, here we are, uh, California, I can talk about some of these movies. Bill Murray, uh, the man who knew too little. Wouldn't you like to be the man who knew too little? They tried to poison him, choke him, strangle him, kidnap him. He left his way through the whole movie because he was in the mindset that it was, he thought it was interactive theater and that they're all characters. So even though people were trying to kill him, they thought he was some kind of a super agent, like a, like a super American agent. Because he said, he is good. The way he said, he is good. But see, he was simply clueless and defenseless. And that's why he was so carefree. You know, even when they came up to mug him at the beginning, he, he caught himself. He said, oh, let's do this scene again. And then he had a knife. You had a pull a knife on him. And he was like, well, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Because he was in the state of mind that the Course in Miracles talks about. That it's a dream. Why would you react with fear to the dream if you knew you were the dreamer? It's when you forget that you're dreaming and you get all caught up with the dream figures and you think you're one of the figures and you think there's all these characters around you that mean you ill, you forget that you're dreaming. And that's what's so profound about this transformation is that it, it empowers you to see that you are the dreamer of the dream. You can have peace of mind. You know, you can do what Jesus talked about, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Not by fighting it, not by trying to kill it, not by trying to destroy it, but just by learning to forgive it. The world, and stay in your own heart, stay in your own innocence. So these are profound ideas, and it seems like wherever I go, um, just spontaneous gatherings spring up. Um, I accepted the invitation to come out here to the One Center, which was so gracious to get in. Uh, Lenny back there said to get in yesterday, and it's got a bunch of other ones. And uh, now I've got a string of gatherings going up to California and back down and down to San Diego. And, you know, uh, and I, I'm just going to fly out here initially, fly out and back. So I got a, a, a round trip ticket was donated to me. And now I'm not even going to get to use the second half of the, of the round trip ticket because my friend Roberta, she was guided to, uh, she met this guy at a cafe who, who donated a car to her. And so we are, it's almost like Cinderella, we're in the, we're in the pumpkin carriage. <laughs> it's a green Volkswagen facade, unlike the fairy tale. <laughs> but we're just going to be gallivanting around when I, you know, and this was, as Robin was saying, she had another, seemingly another place lined up, and then this place shows up. And it, it's better than you can ever imagine. When you, when you surrender your life to spirit, it's like you're not going to be some poor, desolate being that's laying in the gutter somewhere. It just gets better and better and better the more you take your hands off of the, the steering wheel. <laughs> in fact, it's, you can actually become to be almost like a passenger where you feel like you're in the limo, and your higher power is doing the driving. And as funny as that sounds, there's actually a line in A Course in Miracles where Jesus says, it cannot be difficult to do the test 
that Christ appointed you to do, for it is he who does it. In other words, you are just a translucent, transparent vehicle, like St. Francis, make me an instrument. And when you don't take anything personally, I'm telling you, it is like a cakewalk. You watch the world, it's just like a fairy tale. And when I talk about my life to people, they say it sounds like some kind of a fairy tale, but it's a very happy fairy tale because you're not in charge and you don't have to feel this sense of strain and stress and control always trying to run the show. So I feel honored and, and usually I also say that I never go, I never give sermons because I talk a little bit but then I don't really have a whole lot to say except when people ask me questions. So uh, as we wrap it up here, I know I've, and if I have a few more minutes, how are we doing on time? Two more time. Oh. Dr. Pearl's here in about 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. After you, we'll take a little Okay, we've got 20 minutes. So, what I always like to do, because we're all connected and we're really all one, is I always like to open it up to the floor uh, for questions, because the Spirit's always with us and always orchestrating all of our encounters. And that's what makes it fun for me. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to just go around and give a bunch of talks, because... That's more like the, the bio says lecture, but I don't really see myself as a lecturer. I'm more like a, a little child that has all this free, and I like to show up places and then have people ask questions, and then it gets interesting <laughs> as we get into all kinds of good stuff. So while we have about uh, 20 minutes or so, does anybody have any uh, questions or comments? And again, there's no good questions or bad questions, so just feel free to... Ask me whatever, and uh, I will be happy to answer any questions. Next one.